Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me in my old bedroom at my mum's house and today we're going to have a closer look at the anatomy of a telescope. The telescope in question today is this. This is a Skywatcher Heritage 130p Dobsonian telescope. It's certainly a mouthful to say but it is absolutely awesome to look at the sky through. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at some of the bits and pieces that make up a telescope like this and have a look what they're called and what they do. So if we set the camera free, I'll first of all say I apologise if you hear any cat noises in the background but Pippin has come to make herself welcome and part of the video. So let's have a look at the telescope itself. Right, now there's a few basic things that you're instantly going to notice. This is on this weird wooden sliding mount here. This is called a Dobsonian mount rather than the Elt Azimuth and Equatorial mounts of the sort of more fancy looking uh, tripod based telescopes but we'll look at those properly in another video. And the Dobsonian mount is as simple as it gets really and it's super sort of straightforward, doesn't require any setup really so you can just dump the telescope down somewhere and start looking through it. Basically you've got the turntable there that the telescope's based on so obviously that's nice and simple to move across the sky and at the side here you'll see we've got this to tighten or loosen for actual um, vertical movement. That's the one. Right. So, nice and simple Dobsonian mount. That's our first uh, term to look at. If we move ourselves down here, you can see from the front of the telescope, because this is extendable, it's got this open part here, which is quite handy for this video, because we can obviously see properly and clearly around the uh, secondary mirror here. So, the first thing that I'll say on this, or the first two things that I'll say, that again are rather different from a lot of telescopes, is... The focuser here, so is where you pop the eyepiece in, which we'll look at in just a second, but this is a helical focuser, rather than the ones that have a little dial to focus that's separate, so obviously this, you're spinning the entire eyepiece, and that's something that's a little bit sort of controversial, because it does mean, obviously, as you're spinning that and spinning the eyepiece, it's not as steady and stable as if you had the little uh, dial to move it up and down individually, but again, Unless you're doing some sort of super duper astronomy or astrophotography or anything like that, I wouldn't worry too much. And again, I do love this telescope. I've spent a good a good many hours out using it. Coming round to the finder scope here, this again is unusual. This is a red dot finder scope, so that when you look from the back here, you would look up and obviously have this lined up with where the telescope's looking and just inside that part there you would see a red dot as the name would suggest which appears as if it's projected sort of into the sky and obviously that's how you line up and figure out what you're going to be looking at when you look through the actual proper eyepiece. So those are two things. Uh, the finder scope on most telescopes, certainly most sort of beginner telescopes will be almost like a miniature telescope itself but again that's the sort of thing that it's something you'll get used to using and you'll figure out over time what you prefer and how you like to use them. You might even be super fancy and have a motor-driven uh, telescope, which then can obviously start to line up and do things all of its own accord. So, coming down to the actual sort of proper business end of the telescope, we have got... This end here, which is, this is what, when I say it's 130p, that basically stands for 130 millimeter aperture at the front. If it was a refractor telescope, which is the, the same concept basically as one half of a pair of binoculars, or indeed if it was a pair of binoculars, this would be the objective lens here where the light is gathered and comes in. The light obviously travels down to the back of the telescope where we've got that big parabolic mirror there which this again is a Newtonian reflector telescope is the definition of this. As I mentioned, a refractor telescope would be a telescope that takes in light and refracts it to your eyes somewhere down the bottom end probably. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty simple again. Light comes in, goes down here, bounces off that mirror, which is obviously concave, focusing it back up onto this. The primary mirror is the one down there, so that makes this the secondary mirror. This could also be known as the diagonal, and really it's just sort of interchangeable terms, but it's all referring to basically this part of the telescope. This then obviously points the light back up, which is all then focused through the eyepiece into your eye, hopefully. 
Uh, on this end here, we've got various options that we can use to unscrew that middle one there and then I think use an Allen key to get into those parts there if I can get that in focus for you. Um, use Allen keys to then angle and change this as a secondary mirror for focusing. Um, equally, many telescopes will have this um, sort of cross system here rather than this that's just got one single arm holding the secondary mirror because obviously the more it's sort of locked into the actual body of the telescope the more stable it's going to be and the less likely it'll be to need refocusing and collimating every now and then. So that actual cross thing would be known as the spider for again anybody who's interested. Um, if we flip this around now and have a look at the back end of the telescope you'll see we have got a few sets of screws here. Now these big ones are what hold the back mirror in place, but if you unscrew those slightly, you would then have these little, uh, or these largest uh, screws here, which you then would twist and turn to alter the angle of the mirror that's actually in there itself, which basically is all part of the process called collimation which is how you basically line up the mirrors and everything to ensure that it's focusing up here in the best possible image that you can get. And collimating on a telescope like this is done with something like this. And I will post the link in the video description to my proper collimation video. A few other random bits and pieces. We've got eyepieces. These are what you use to obviously pop into that section and then view the actual sky itself. This is where your magnification really sort of is uh, based on. Where depending on what um, length the eyepiece is, this is a four millimeter one. And basically the smaller the number there, the higher the magnification. So that would have a lot higher magnification than something like this 10 millimeter one. Again, these are all things that I've covered in other videos or will cover. Um, equally, another little thing, we've got a filter. This is a moon filter here, but there's different coloured ones and different uh, layers that do different things. I take away nights, uh, yeah, the light pollution in the night sky, some of them do. This one's to add a bit of contrast and stop the moon from being quite so dazzling. And these screw into the bottom part of the eyepieces, as just on the inside, these are tapered, which is extremely difficult to try and show you on the camera. And also, when it comes to magnification, you can get items such as this, which is a Barlow lens. And you basically then take a standard existing eyepiece, put that into there. You can get different types of Barlow lens. Some will be two times magnification, some will be three times, and there's all sorts of variation about. But the Barlow itself is a device to effectively double, in this case, the magnification of any eyepiece that you put in the telescope itself. So, that's been a very quick look. Hopefully that's been useful, I'm not sure. And let's go back to me stood next to the desk to wrap things up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful or interesting. Check out my other videos for all sorts of other astronomy things and looking at the moon and things to look for and all that sort of stuff. Feel free to check out my other videos for loads of boat life and walking, kayaking, biking and going up mountains and all that sort of stuff too. Feel free as well, if you're particularly interested, to check out the Facebook page or even add me personally on Facebook and Twitter if you want to see loads of random photos of canal scenery and updates from Life Afloat. And of course, if you're really interested, consider checking out my books available for the Kindle. Just search Amazon for The Narrowboat Lads or check the links to everything just mentioned in the description below. Until the next time, keep it astronomical, keep it boatworthy and farewell.